Okay, and we're live, 801. How are you people? Let's just check, I'm actually, I am actually live. <clears throat> There's my comment. I'm gonna wait until I see, probably Mark Noosey again, all right. Um, whilst people are gathering, then yeah, this is episode 16 of um, Let's Talk About. And if you're listening to the recording and you're new to this, because I have to remember that. I listened back to last week's with Keith Burnett because it was just so awesome. And um, I realized that I have to remember that some people choose to watch this afterwards when it's not live. So if you are listening to the recording, thank you very much. I'm um, sorry you couldn't join us live. We do recommend that you do try and come live because then, well, first of all, it's just great networking. You're part of the bars and the comment section goes crazy. It's all little breakouts, conversations going on. Also, you can ask our speakers direct questions as well. Um, but if you've got something better to do, then we understand. We don't hold it against you. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, here we are, episode 16. I've got some people in the room now. Um, if you do join us live, then I can bring up your comments on the screen, which is another reason to join us live. There we are. Vincent, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us, mate. Uh, Mark Nussie is in here. Evening, Matt Phillips. You can call me Matt now, Mark. Uh, Mark. It's been 16 episodes, so yeah, let's do first name now, why not? Um, what did Gary send you, by the way? I've forgotten. I can't remember. Anyway, Mark, yes, good to see you, mate. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for all the, uh, the sharing of stuff. I do see it on social media. Glenn as well. Uh, good to see you, Glenn. Thanks for coming in again. All the regulars are here. Then we've got, what a great name, Despina Romri Lazarus. How are you doing, Despina? Where are you from? Uh, I'm presuming that there is a there is a trace of some... Um, non-english bloodline there with that name um so please if you're from bromley or hackney then sorry but i see some kind of heritage there going on uh but yeah nice to see you as well um there we go right so yeah if you do want to leave your comments or ask a question you will come up on the screen like that um last week we can't ignore the fact that last week we had uh big keith in the house let me get rid of my solo and bring that up um wasn't that great uh feedback a lot of love for keith it was exceptional it was really good um i always say this every week that our guest has got big shoes to fill but let's face it every guest we've had so far has just been incredible so uh but yeah keith last week there's some lovely feedback thank you for all the emails you received and keith is very flattered as well with some of the uh, comments that he had and um, it's always nice um something again a trait in this group is everyone's just really modest and um, so never hold back a compliment or a thank or an email um or a private tweet message or something it always i speak from experience myself it always is really nice to get something it's why we do it really we don't do it for the money do we we just do it um for the thanks and the feeling that we've actually helped um, someone else so yeah uh, much appreciated um it is on youtube like i say um all our episodes go onto youtube i think now if we have a little look where we are this i took this screenshot this evening 59 subscribers look at that we're nearly up to triple figures um if you haven't subscribed yet there's no reason not to subscribe, I'm afraid. Um, you don't get any mail or anything. The only videos we put up there are these, so you get a notification when a video is uploaded. Um, so do please go along <clears throat> to, um, you can either Google in YouTube Sports Therapy Association, or if you want, you can stick in the youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Sports Therapy Association. And you'll find us, all we've got on there is the videos. Um, and it would really help us if you do go in there and click that subscribe button and push that up. It's still a bit embarrassing. There's only 59 on there because we're such a huge organization. So I know you're all busy people, but do please try and go in and subscribe to that. Um, get rid of that. Uh, but tonight we are going to talk to, I'm very excited actually. I think maybe I've overdone it on social media. I hope I haven't beaten them up too much. But I just, I remember Tom. I think I mentioned maybe last week when I was talking to Keith, I remember having a conversation back at what was Therapy Expo 2014, which was like six years ago now. Um, and I was speaking there and in the canteen there, there, I remember sitting down and having a coffee with Keith, who I'd never met before, and Tom, who I'd never met before. And I thought two things. I thought, Keith, well, he's big. And then I thought, Tom, well, he's young and uh, he's ambitious and he's gonna go somewhere and I feel quite jealous. And I remember that at the time. And uh, and true enough, um, he did. He's led a very exciting uh, life, which, and that's why I'm excited he's here as a guest, because we're gonna, he's gonna share that with you about how he's developed things and where he's got to. And same as a case of Keith, really, just drive, just consistency. 
Um, I'm hoping he talks about a few of the failures along the way um, and as obviously as well as the successes. And I'm hoping for you lot, it'll be a chance to see some of the mistakes we all make, um, some of the different options we've got uh, when it comes to setting up a business. And like I said in the Facebook Live today, coming back with your business during COVID is like setting up a new business, isn't it? In a lot of ways. So I might pick his brain on that about how he's had to tweak and change things uh, to survive in our current uh, times. Um, so that's what it's all about. Um, just have a quick check before to say my highs to everyone. Uh, Mark, oh, that was Mark's um, prize from Gary here. Lamb to stay in the association for another year. I told you it would be an amazing prize. Uh, there we go. Talking to Gary, there you go. Evening from STA. Gary. Hi, Gary. How are you doing, mate? Becky is in the house. Hi, Becky. How are you? Um, and also Gary has reminded us that look out in the STA members area over the coming days as we've got some great prize giveaways, training bursaries and free course places. There you go. This is another reason to join us live because you get the news as it happens. Right. Enough um, goings on for me. Let's bring it up. Let's get rid of that for the moment. And bring up Tom Colwell. Tom Colwell. There you go, mate. How you doing? Good. Fine, Matt. How are you? I'm very well. All the better for seeing you, mate. I'm glad. I'm glad that one that we're actually bringing members um, up um, and people who are part of the STA, and two because I've I followed you for quite a few years and I've seen what you're doing. Um, and coincidentally, the last few months I've been watching your social media and you're producing some really great messages and content. So I'm pleased you're here, mate. I'm looking forward to people who haven't met you knowing about you. Sure. So. Um, for people who don't know you and haven't met you, um, give us a little breakdown, mate. What's it all about? Where'd you come from? How did you get to where you are? So I'm on the Isle of Wight, which is um, a little bit of a unique place, if you like, to live, um, in my own opinion anyway. I, I graduated 2011 from Hartbury University with a nearly sports therapy degree. Um, it was a coaching sciences degree with sports therapy in brackets. So it kind of sold itself as sports therapy, but um, after it was an unregistered one as well, it wasn't like connected to any particular body. Um, after trying to apply to a few of the normal bodies, if you like, um, SST, STO, um, I got rejected because I was in, I think the STO even said, you're two modules away from a sports therapy degree. Um, then STA, I messaged Gary messaged me back, I think within the day, just like send me over your transcripts and module breakdown. And then he came back and said, you can join us literally like that. And I was like, well, that's a good start, starting point. Right. Um, I didn't join until 2014. So that three year period, 2011 to 2014, um, that was a little bit of a discovery phase, um, worked at a local college, learning support. Um, I was very lucky enough to work at the London 2012 games. Um, I was a medal bearer. So I was the one with the dodgy Star Trek outfit with the tray of medals just to like stand in front of a stage. Right. Um, it was then I had a stint at college in America for three months on a scholarship that just didn't work out very well. Um, so I chose to come home. I was just like, this isn't right. Um, it was a friend that set me off on that, that just didn't go well. Um, so 2013, got a part-time job in a gym where I live on the island, then got another part-time job as a sports coach for a local primary school. Um, it ended up, I was always looking for roles that were relevant, I still think, like education, um, helping people in a health perspective. Um, once I'd worked on the Isle of Wight in the gym section, if you like, or the health and fitness industry, I realised how much little there was here in terms of what I perceive as next level of training so started to plan opening my own gym and that's where Valentis was the it was the idea initially right at the time I was doing CrossFit myself I was keen for it I believed in it I liked the methodology it made sense to me helping people build broad functional training um, intensity was right up my street because I used to be a sprinter um, so it ticked a lot of boxes for me. And then I thought, why don't I open a CrossFit gym specifically? It was about 14 months after I initially wrote down, open my own gym to then open in August, 2014. Um, 
summer and I opened it and we opened CrossFit Valentis. Didn't know what to expect. Zero members. Let's see what happens. Um, and just built from there. Six so that's when ago. I would have met you. Yeah. So if, if Therapy Expo was probably, I think it was November, maybe October 2014. Yeah. So I remember you, we were talking about that. And but even then, I think I remember you saying that you enjoyed CrossFit, but you were aware of certain mentalities sure. yeah. and things that you wanted to break away from. Yeah. I that think, was like one of your goals. Yeah. And I think, thankfully, f maybe from my upbringing, I've always been, ne I've never a hundred percent bought into something really. I've kind of, if it's made sense and, and I think, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do it, but I'll always be willing to challenge it. And, um, first two years of opening a CrossFit gym, I was like, yeah, I tried to introduce, I was like, yeah, okay, this, this is, I feel like this is right. I tried to introduce my therapy skills. Um, wanted to, you know, help people in an assessment. Um, I wanted to give people mobility drills um, based on other learnings along the way. And then probably, I think three years in, that was when I really started to notice that maybe I, I wasn't getting the results I wanted out of my business and clients were also experiencing these niggles and um, issues that I didn't want. So I started to look at other methodologies and ways to train, got out of my lane. I think that's a good way to think of it. I just went, I don't know this guy, but I like what he's saying. Let's give him a go. Um, and I've just spent probably the last three years looking for that kind of learning. Um, we proceeded three years ago to try and do a bit of a hybrid. We were thinking CrossFit methodology, but with our own twist. Um, what we started to witness, but we didn't really know back then until more recently, we were starting to see a division in our group, in our gym. People were here for CrossFit. They loved the intensity, you know, Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics combinations. Other people were listening to what we were saying about health and, you know, building strength across the whole body, not just worrying about, you know, the movements. And then we were just getting to that point where we kept questioning it, kept butting heads with ideas. Um, so it ended up being like a 50, 50 business almost. We weren't a hundred percent one where we could drive forward. It was just a little bit restricting on both sides. Along the way, I've been lucky enough to pick up various roles. Um, for anyone who's watching, maybe, um, I did the talk last November, um, at the therapy expo. I just explained how, I think the talk I had was about finding a future for sports therapists. And I just explained the work I've done and what I've found along the years and how actually the opportunities are out there for people to just go, I've not done that yet. I think I can offer something and then go for it. So, you know, professional sports teams, individual athletes, um, uh, February this year ended my working with a company from America. It was a fitness program company that just did online programming and I was employed as their online therapist that was a new role for me in terms of how to operate online um, and then just amalgamation of all these experiences just left me at lockdown if I bring ourselves to lockdown if you like um, we had to react we had to close but we had to make sure we were providing for our members because I'd done online work I just thought quick, let's make that happen. Within two or three days, we'd set up a timetable. I'd known how to use all this kind of stuff to coach people in a class. Um, we lent kit to people um, so that they at home had at least a kettlebell or a dumbbell. So in a class, they could follow along. My private work, which was, I guess, what I've been building up along the side as Rebuild Coach, the brand, has very much been more like um, corrective exercise, strength training, commitments of two months to really, you know, work with people for a longer period. I was able to continue that during lockdown because we had Zoom. I was able to watch them doing their exercises from far away. We could keep some form of regular timetable going. So it felt like, yes, we're all at home, but they could keep up with their rehab work and stuff like that. May this year was where uh, we invested in a, in a gent called Chet, um, who Chet Morjaria, who we followed a long time. He's been in the CrossFit scene before. Uh, just a solid guy who's got a serious knowledge on working with coaches. And we felt we needed some help with not just maybe our business, but 
the messaging. For a long time, we've understood the importance of marketing. I guess that's kind of the subject matter of today as well, right? Um, we've, we've understood the importance of marketing consistently, but never really known 100% the message to give. Um, but Chet has helped us really refine that, um, helped us understand where our messages come from initially. And, and I'm glad you said that you think the stuff I've been producing for the last couple of months has been good because it's been, you know, shaped and molded and from what we're, I've learned with Chet. It shows. Actually, it shows cool. yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, that makes me feel better because it means that it's worth the investment. Yeah, cool. Um, but actually what he helped us realize was we weren't happy in our current business. Coming back to the idea of having like a 50, 50 butting heads all the time, me and Stella, my partner, we just said, look, I think now's the time. Now's the time to make a change because we're closed for another two and a bit months. We've got time to prep. We've got time to tell our members. Um, we were fortunate that there was the, um, it was, um, that special, the specific loan that the government introduced late, late on the bounce back loan. I think it was, the terms were favorable, everything aligned at that point, And we were like, maybe this is the time. So we ditched CrossFit completely. It'd been three years of me questioning it anyway. Um, in a way, the company I worked for in America, they were run by two high level CrossFit athletes. And the program was very CrossFit-y as well. When I went out there in November, it was the week before the Therapy Expo, I, worked, I went out there for a week to film movement demo videos. We were building the program to be a little bit more in 2020. Um, I really realized from them specifically in their physical health, how much CrossFit had really affected them, not in a good way. And I know CrossFit, it's an opinion fact, I guess, like where how people feel about CrossFit. But if I'm looking at people's ability for their shoulders to function well, how good are they engaging their core when they bend over, for example, anyway, they had probably some of the worst examples of that because they've been exposed to a high level CrossFit, 10 hours a week, functional movement involving Olympic weightlifting and gymnastics. And they were actually really not balanced in their whole body. There was some real neck issues, shoulder issues, like six years of a bad hip, for example. We see that, don't we? We see that with athletes. An athlete, when they're actually peaking for their event, on an everyday life existence, they're not healthy, really. They're not healthy. They're fit for their sport. But if you take any sprinter, any, particularly if it's strength related, or boxer or fighter, the day of the competition, they're probably in the worst shape of their life in terms of being healthy and getting up and feeling well about themselves. So that's what worries me about CrossFit. It's like they're always trying to look and be in peak, but they're not having that cycle of just then getting back with it and peaking up again. It's like full on the whole time. It's like listening to techno without a break. That's my impression, and it's probably misguided. Uh, no, I, I think that's how I share that because um, in terms of all the learning I've gone with them, um, Oh, I'm a bit quiet, Glenn said. Maybe I'm too far from the mic. Um, so in terms of that, from my learnings through CrossFit through the years, um, periodization doesn't exist for them. Intensity is a focus. Yeah. And when I have seen over the years myself with them in my own gym that people are actually trying to push their hardest every session, it's the idea of peaking every session. Um and I'm just like, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, like the change we've made as a business and how, if you was to say, if you was to ask how we help people in our training Monday to Friday, programming wise, now we're very much focused on broad tension and awareness in the body, which dictates the lift and our movement, if you like, in a strength training context. And we have specific strength classes, not mixed. The conditioning work, we actually work uh, focus on breathing gears. Um, there's a guy called Brian McKenzie. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, yeah. Um, their program Shift, which is used to be power speed endurance, whatever it is. There's a lot of Wim Hof connections. There's a lot of like um, James Nestor. There's a lot of um, McEwen, is it Patrick McEwen or something? Just the concept of breathing certain ways to keep you at a level in endurance, to be able to push you further. That's been a big um principle today in our fitness work and even in the six weeks that we've reopened feedback we've noticed already from members directly 
I ask, I see him Friday night and I'll go, just by chance, do you feel beat up at the end of this week? And everyone's like, I feel great. Mm. And I've been doing this every week, like four times a week. So even in the short term, we're feeling like we've made a good decision because it is a risk when you make the jump to a new model when you're six years old and you've got, you know, members that you're going to make unhappy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was a real, it's been a real confidence booster these last few weeks that even in the short term, the focus we've had, we've had as a health business has allowed our members to go, I feel great. I now actually have ways at home to manage stress better because of the breathing drills. Brilliant. I now feel stronger, literally, instead of thinking I'm stronger because I've just lifted a weight once. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a more of an internal feedback than it is a I've just done a PR on a barbell. So that's for me ultimately the, the win because I want people to not rely on us. I want people to have this ability to just go and do whatever they want and feel safe and Witness that. Sounds excellent. And, and it's no coincidence, I always find that when people come through our doors and they're injured, an awful lot of the time, they don't feel great. They're doing often that we know that in a lot of injuries, particularly with runners, it's inappropriate loading. 60 to 70% of the time, they're just doing too much. And so many of our patients, when you actually say, okay, so, and you're doing this six, seven days a week, and how do you feel most of the week? Pretty knackered, to say the truth. And it's like, and have you got much up and go? Did you, how do you feel first in the morning when you open your eyes? Got to get to the gym. What about nice thoughts? Like, no, nah, well, no, actually, I'm a bit stressed out because um, I, I know that I've only got an hour at the gym. And it's like, they're not enjoying life. Yeah. And that time when you turn it around and say, you have to let them do it because it's their whole identity and everything. But when it sounds like, like the people you're training, they're actually put a pin in what they're doing before. And now they're realizing, hold on, I want to wake up in the morning and go, Oh, I feel great. Let's do it. As opposed to, oh, I'm knackered. Oh, I'll probably feel better once I've gone to the gym and got all those endorphins running around. It's good. It sounds good. When yeah, you gave that's, your that's title, say, yeah. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Um, and I'll just hazard, I mean, I know that in CrossFit, like any kind of big brand, there's going to be huge variations around the country. So we're not slanging off CrossFit full stocks. That would be, it's never black and white, is it? It's just kind of the ethos that's sold through their advertising a lot of the time, isn't it? We're only commenting on the image which they portray, all the videos on Instagram. It's always just people going for it. You know, you never see a CrossFit advert, someone, a CrossFit advert with someone going, I'm having a rest day today, just to not overdo it. And no, it never happens. It's always some kind of ripped girl or boy just maxing doing it out. Reps. Yeah, doing more reps, you know. And anyway the title you gave me marketing your significance not your services now some of that i can see already in what you've in what you've said already but explain to me why that you came up with that title give me some examples of that which you think will help uh, people watching there's um i'm a big observer of my markets if you like and i'm lucky to be i guess part of a therapy industry as well as a health and fitness industry i know they're they are connected, but there is a clear differentiation in groups as well. Um, and having joined loads of groups, having spoke to other business owners, having just followed loads of pages that I am either liking what they post or have followed pages and then later on gone, I'm not sure about that. I think marketing has been, um, has never been an education for anyone, maybe. Like, let me rephrase that. I don't know many people who day one just know what marketing is when they open a business. Um, you have to go and pay for someone to do it for you. You have to really find someone to learn it from. And actually as well, when I think about the experiences I've had with different marketing people, they all say something different. So you feel like you're still left in a bit of a limbo about what is marketing. Um, from where I know today, based on Chet's work, I'm, I'm bigging up Chet quite a lot because he's helped us a lot recently, but um, an editor of a magazine, worked with loads of coaches, messaging, communications, like his, that's his expertise. Um, he's taught me that um, you should be saying um, what, you should be talking with meaning. There should be meaning behind what you're posting. It should not be a throwaway comment. It should not be a sales pitch. Um, and throwaway comments and sales pitches are examples of what I see a lot in a majority of, if I was just to stay in the sports therapy world, if you like, it's a majority of that, I think. Um, for example, I see posts like they're using their main page saying, I have availability tonight or um, 
I've just signed up to this course, book in. And I'm just like, I don't know who, I don't know who you are. You could be anyone saying that, and I'm not gonna buy from you because you haven't told me who you are, what you mean, what your skill set is, what what you believe in. Um, there's just like this level of understanding marketing even in a general population sense that people don't know what it is. They just read adverts and go, I like it, I'll buy it. Um, but that that's another way of thinking of it, right? If you've got people that don't even care what marketing is as a subject because they're just a consumer and they just look at it and go, that was really cool. I'm going to buy the new iPhone because that advert was sick. From that end, you can see that the advert reached to them, made them feel a certain way, gave them that sense of that's a really special product. And even just looking at it in that sense, are the messages that you're giving in your social media making people feel a certain way, representing your product as being high level? Does that make sense? Like, mm. Just even uh, just quickly, like thinking about marketing from my experience and what I see. Um, I, at the actually the expo that I went to before, I think we had the coffee. I went with my mate Joe. We sat in um, a lecture. It was a marketing lecture actually at the at the therapy expo. And it was a quote from Simon Sinek. Have you heard, are you familiar with Simon Sinek? Name is Bell, yeah. He, he talks about the golden circle right. of advertising. And he said, like, in the middle was like, why you want it, what you want, how it works. And he said, most people go, how it works, mm. why you want it, what it is. And then Apple or big brands do it the other way around. And that's a success. Um, and it actually, it comes back to the idea of marketing, why you are really good, mm. testimonials uh marketing what you believe in making some real bold statements about how you want to help people right they are can i they're just ideas on what you can post um that actually might boost your profile in your local community much better than just saying i've got availability tonight right um because again yeah i mean we've all been there and we've all done it and when you first come out starting your business I mean, I remember doing it, but it's, do you think the ideas you come up with, like you've met this Che, is it? No, Chi. Che. Yeah. Um, would you recommend then that it's a good investment? Because a lot of, a lot of what you're saying, you wouldn't have come around by yourself to this kind of enlightenment. You need to sit down with a professional and then they have a chat with you and then they bring out the best. So are you thinking it would be a good investment for these people to find someone similar to Chet and do the same sort of thing? And if so, is it going to cost, is it a big investment? How much sort of money do these sort of people charge? it's so chet works with six or seven people at a time for three months um and it's a couple of thousand at least um but i think that's also because what he has taught us mm -hmm. obviously is set foundations to now feel like i can market for as long as i need and i have the knowledge on how to adapt it and how to change the range and how to like change the messaging um, if you really wanted to, you could probably look back at my social media posts and you can look at every Monday. It's a certain thing. Every Tuesday it's a certain mm -hmm. thing, but the Monday to Friday journey is also connected. Um, like bold statement, grab people's attention, long post, make people think about it. Middle bit, give free advice, tips, here's thing, three mistakes people make, three ways to get stronger. Next step is a testimonial from someone who's worked with us which backs up the three days that we've just talked about. And then the final one is the call to action, which is, do you want to get stronger? Very clever, isn't it? So as much as a template, it has a lot of, you know, the template is great and it works, but it's actually connecting the template to the health professional that matters the most. So I am not the same as you, it's not the same as Gary, it's not the same as Keith in how yeah. we think and how we believe. So it's actually identifying what that is or who you are and what you believe in so your messaging has meaning so that you can actually build on your marketing from there so mm. big big kudos to chat massive kudos like so social media posting that's a brilliant one and i'm thinking of people i mean mike james i'm thinking of, i'm sure he's probably talked to chat as well because mike's always i think i'm sure he's just the same sort of thing we've got his messages putting down things and then eventually there's a call to action it's a it's interesting i don't know i'm so cynical with these things but sure. I hate to think that it's a business in it. I've always had this love hate relationship with advertising. Do you remember the, did you ever watch the comedian Bill Hicks? Ever Bill Hicks? The American. Yeah. 
yeah, who died of cancer in the end, even though he's always smoking and making. But I remember him with, in one of his live stand-ups, he was like on stage and going, is anybody in here uh, into advertising? Go and kill yourselves. And it was just like, it was like, because he was just so sick of all the advertising and the Coca-Cola and the and and all of the just the fakeness of it all so i've always had this hate and i've worked in advertising for years in in magazines and things and i still but there is bad advertising and there's horrible advertising and there's stuff which purposely stops they know how to stop you when you're scrolling down facebook and get your attention and then you can see they've got all these likes like the like things really annoys me and then you click onto who's liking these things and it's just a thousand weird names who have never posted anything it's just so false but it's like everything in life, isn't it? There's a pendulum way. It swings too far this way and you hate it, but you can't afford to go all the other way and not do advertising it at all. Yeah. You know, you've got to sit in the middle and actually do it properly. So you do have to play the game, don't you? For sure. And I see it as just acceptance. Like I've just accepted that this is part of my job mm. and it's an essential um, because what I have learned, even before we worked with Chet, because we were posting something every day, we were still getting attention mm. and um i'm a big follower of a guy called gary vaynerchuk or gary v he just talks about constantly you need to just go where people are looking mm. get their attention and that's how you build um part of the reason why i have this kit i before lockdown i'd done a mock podcast um i'd done a few vlog episodes on my youtube channel i'm going to restart that again over the next month or two um I see it as awareness building, brand building, and then marketing anyway, because people get to know me and my vision and what I'm up to. So it's um, it's interesting here you say about, you've worked in advertising. And it's funny, because I think advertising isn't marketing, it's sales. Does that make sense? It's sales a nice marketing. Yeah, yeah so sales cool. and marketing for me are like, that's the I think that's the gray area as well. People think sales is marketing, marketing is sales, which it is. But the, the real deeper definitions, I think, are um, marketing is messaging and meaning and you representing you. Sales is the call to action, the final ceiling of the deal. Right. And your ability to communicate to make sales is not the same as your ability to communicate, to get a message out to people. Um, I've good. worked in I worked in um, my, one of my first jobs outside of school was at Phones for You. Phones for. <laughs> was. Perfect. Um, okay. And uh, I learned a lot in the short time I was there about the importance of sales, but I also learned how definitely not to do it the wrong way, uh, like not being cheesy, not being sleazy. Um, I was literally like flabbergasted. And there's a reason why phones for you probably are not here anymore, because I've seen what they get up to as tactics. But I, I saw the relevance and the importance. So I've always appreciated sales mm. in terms of like, it still works. Like, does that make sense? Because mm. we still have the ability to reason with people to gain something back so in a sales approach how we operate now this is maybe this is a good example as, as how we work now we ask people in the call to action from our marketing click here if you want to book in a consultation call mm. the consultation call is with me it's some leading questions that i will ask about your experiences what what you're looking for why us um and then just explain the package on how we work the fact that they've got to that point where they've booked in a consultation call, which is actually two steps after the Facebook page, because we do a website newsletter sign up, then they have to fill in a questionnaire to book a call. If they've got that far, they're more than likely going to buy from me because they've put in an effort to get to those points. And then it's just down to me to have the call to just seal the deal. And, and you know, the way I am with people is um, I'm a listener and I'm a reminder of, this is why we do it. Um, what do you want to do next? And then as soon as you put the onus back on them in that sense, they usually, it's not, it's not even a pressure thing, right? Because most people might say, maybe you're pressuring too much, but I think there's just an art to it a little bit um, when you've got a knack of selling and, and to, to give a context maybe for the listeners. And I think this is relevant, like um, for sports therapists as well. Um, we don't, we don't sell anything less than 150 quid a pop now as a business um either people don't buy it which is fine because we're that's the way we've set up our margins and our marketing and the kind of people we want but i've i've operated and now the gym operates where we are able to focus on new people coming in 
for 150 to 300 quid for 30 days. And then at that point, we get to do more time to sell them more about us, how good we are, how effective we are. And then they have a choice after that to sign up for us for a long period. And I think it's relevant because if I'm connecting the marketing, my significance, if that's the title of this topic, right? I've got them to a point where they've believed me to sign up. And this is not, this is not like paid Facebook ads, by the way, as well, because there's a difference there too. Paid Facebook ads is a different category. Um, organic messaging, getting signups that way is still the best way to get good, good like leads and good people that you want to work with. Um, so we've built this journey from marketing to call to action on the website, to consultation call to sign up, which is the, is the feedback for me alone on the marketing quality and effectiveness. Um, so marketing my significance as a health business or marketing Valentis's significance is even in the short term, it's so, it's, you know, it's doing good work. Do you still, how much of what you offer is sports therapy as well? Are you still looking after people with injuries? Well, this is how we've evolved Valentis a little bit more. So uh, step one is an assessment. We take everyone through a physical assessment that I formulated over a few years of trial and error and putting things together. It helps us identify where they have issues and weaknesses day one. Either they've chosen a one-to-one -one first 30 days where we have nine more sessions together in a month, which is quite intense, but actually more effective in the initial sense because we're teaching them new movements. We're able to keep an eye on them. At the end of that month, they probably feel like that was really effective. I might do another round or I might go to like the next tier down, which is one one-to-one -one a week. We're able to up, you know, work with people effectively. And if I give you an example, I've got a, a young girl, PE teacher, she's just joined. Um, she came to me from a referral from an osteopath we trust, lower back pain, had it for 10 years, ex-rugby player, still wants to play rugby. At no point has she talked about her back since we've started our work in the training. And she's only mentioned it that something happened, but actually something's changed already because we talk about breathing drills, keeping yourself calm, thinking about what you've done that day and people in pain, if you like, we've kind of incorporated that into our normal operations at Valentis, where we can help people, whether they have back pain, knee pain, want to get fitter, want to lose weight. It's all kind of been wrapped up into the same place. And what about if it's kind of like, more acute they're coming in limping and how would that fit um, in the scheme of things i guess so i've got a, well yet i'm not sure we haven't had anyone specifically yet get in touch with that kind of issue i would um so your marketing doesn't attract that kind of target audience normally it's people with a chronic problem or just who want to get fit and they've got a bit of history so people who have the same issue recurring if that yeah. makes sense um if it's a first time injury, um, they probably don't come to us. Actually, they probably go to a chiro or a physio mm. and I'm fine with that too, because why not a sports therapist? Do you define making a difference there? You gotta be careful. Remember you're in a room with sports therapists. I know, right? Um, <laughs> so this is, this is, this is interesting because I haven't thought of it this way. Um, mm. I see myself, I think even in my, um, how I describe myself to you, I put all round health pro, like, I think what we do ultimately can help people change their pain because we're looking at a physiological mm. um, a lifestyle um, habits um, feeling supported as a whole package as a business so it caters for that quite a lot um, I'm I make myself available on whatsapp so that when people feel like my back hurts what does this mean I can just quickly message back and give them some peace of mind if people come like we're so we we don't see ourselves as I'm always agreeing. It makes it, it makes it, your voice sound so much nicer when you're there. So yeah, you got to stay close to it. Yeah, sorry, that's um, it. That just makes a huge difference. Um, so people come to us both from, let's say, the therapy side of things as well as the fitness side of things after they've tried other things. So we're not the first port of call, and that's where they've gone to a physio or a chiro a few times. Or a sports therapist or a sports therapist um, or they've tried many gyms and many fitness programs and nothing's really helped. Okay. Um, so we, we're kind of attracting the people that have done lots of things or tried lots of treatments before that don't work or mm -hmm. hasn't worked for them. And then the way we help people is through, as I've mentioned already, like the various support systems and the way we train the body and educate people, education, right? Um, 
so that they can leave the gym and not rely on us. They can actually go and do their day and go feeling a bit stressed. Yeah. I'm just going to take a few breaths. Um, so I guess where I sit in the sports therapy um, industry is almost not a sports therapist. Um, but I've incorporated my knowledge and my expertise into our health business to be able to cater for people, whether they're in pain or whether they just want to get fit. Um, yeah, you're bored. I think what you've done is important because if you just limit yourself to people who come in hobbling, who have just done an accident, then you're kind of you're straight away limiting your target audience. So you're encouraging people to almost like offering more prehab where you can people to come in. They've got a history. It's been bad, but they're thinking, I've got to do something about this now. Yeah. And, and like you said, I love the way how you don't dwell on, for example, if it's a lower back issue, you don't go straight, right, what's up with your lower back? Well, this is what's wrong with your back. It's like, okay, let's just have a look at your exercise, your nutrition, everything. And then they don't even talk about their back anymore, which is great, which is probably such an important message there. Now, I'm just aware that some people in the audience probably are not doing that yet. And I think that they're more, a lot of sports therapists do just rely on people coming in with acute problems um, rather than trying to attract people. Or maybe they haven't found a way yet to get um, i mean we always dream about it I mean, we're always trying to encourage people to come and see us before they're injured yeah um, it makes sense doesn't it although there's also that idea of if it's not broken don't fix it like you said someone comes in they know they're going to be exposing themselves to a lot of exercise or something it does make sense i don't like calling it an mot anymore for various reasons but it makes sense to come in and you're not screening them but you're having a chat we're screening them in a sense, but again, that's an evil word now. So you're just checking, aren't you? Going through the whole of their life, doing some movement patterns and stuff, and just seeing where they could get stronger. It's um, you've obviously got so so the strength and conditioning side of things. Did you do that as part of your degree, or is that something you've bolted on? Minimal, minimal. Um, I went and I've done all the UKCA um, workshops. Okay. Um, yeah. If I was to tell you, my methods today are actually none of that learning um coming back to the point of getting out of my lane i also got out of mainstream if that makes sense mm. um so to give you an idea of guys that have influenced me over the years there's a um a methodology if you like called strong fit uh a coach called julian pino um there's a group called functional patterns in usa um there's dns rehabilitation who have come up a bit more recently uh, anatomy trains, Thomas Myers, um, taking the concepts of the body as a multitude of systems and then treating the body head to toe, not just in the area that's affected mm. has, I've seen the most success and confidently seen that as well. Like, so I've, and this, this is where I'm, I still pinch myself a little bit. I don't know if I'm being unfair on this, but I had a gent with scoliosis and who doesn't have it anymore. Um, maybe that is through the factors of lifestyle as well as exercise, but I've got a client now who has had symptoms or, you know, it's look, they have it, they haven't defined it if you like, but they've said, well, my spine's curved, went to the scoliosis clinic in London, nothing happened. Um, we're offered surgery. Um, but the work we've been doing, she's not having as much as a curve anymore. I think mostly it is down to how I look at training the body um there's a global connection of systems fascia muscle neuromuscular system whatever you want to call it really um that method as well helped me work effectively as an online therapist because i was able to assess quickly give two or three exercises that i knew were about foundation building of a shoulder uh, and then pain changed in two to four weeks for example um so in terms of someone who follows a program online for 15 dollars a month and they get someone who can help them for free as part of the membership and get change in their pain for two to four weeks. They're sat there like, why is that? Why is that available there? Why mm -hmm. is that not available elsewhere? So I guess it's, 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 it's a unique position. Another reason why I've put all, all round health pro, because I don't really, as much as I am a sports therapist by degree, I also now don't know if I'm purely a sports therapist at all. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a, uh, it's, yeah, it's always tricky, isn't it, when you uh, people ask you, what are you, what do you do? And it's it's always, and sports therapy in itself, being called sports, putting that at the beginning often limits your business as well because people assume that you're only going to deal with sports people. But it's tricky, isn't it? We're all trying to change our names. I think that's a natural thing later on. As you get more experience, you just don't like your name anymore. You want to call yourself something else. 
Let's go then to going to the marketing your significance, not your services. The same old question, really. If you could go back to your newly qualified self coming out and starting their business up, maybe you've already said about look at the way you do market, so having a, um, a plan to it, um, especially these days with social media. And I, I love the idea you said where you're actually from Monday to Friday, it's not just random adverts there's actually a theme there even working on a subconscious level well i love the idea of where the like the third or fourth probably subconsciously the people already fuel because they've heard about this in your monday tuesday wednesday now maybe there's a call to action it's like it's brilliant i love it um what other things would you give advice to a kind of a newer therapist in terms of being successful to their business with relation to this market your significance not your services uh i think Taking, taking time to really review who you are, what makes you tick as a health professional, and then um, just some like personal values. You know, I believe in humility, um, being respectful, things like that. If you, if you identify those kind of things, it's not just how you can develop your marketing from there. It might actually be an opportunity to develop your business from there. And I am speaking speaking directly about our recent changes, right? Um, something helped. Something Chet has helped us with is we've spent hours just talking and reviewing, and just me and Stella have been sat in bed at night just with a notepad. Sometimes, like, what do we believe in? You know, what do we want to really go for here? Um, Stella's we, actually your partner part then. Yeah, it's just my, yeah, yeah, I was going to say yeah. Cause, yeah, it's best not to get into bed with your business. Yeah, sure. Um. And yeah, so I, I guess like really taking that time to not rush into just starting a business because you think that's it. Um, like the term build it and they will come, I think is so misleading because you don't know if you're any good or not yet. So how do you know if you actually can make a difference? Well, you can start with knowing really your values, really what you want to do, because actually you'll see more passion out of your work. The clients will see more passion in your work um, and then building a you know, an idea of messaging out to the world that even just that alone, it doesn't even have to be a template because I think we're, you know, if you think about maybe even the time since we have met, like back at the expo, how many more people are vlogging? Um, it's just a way of communicating with the world, right? And we've seen the effect of vlogging. There's people who are now earning a living just from making a video and putting it on YouTube. Um, there's TikTok which, you know, it's going through the, um, it's going through its difficulties right now, but there are people that make money, serious money, just by one post. Those examples, maybe like the TikTok are just too short term. They're up there, unrealistic. Like, I'm not even going to go there really, but I guess what I'm saying is the avenues to communicate with the world are not just about Facebook and Instagram either. They're about other channels. Um, but ultimately, I think people, you'll find the right people who you want to follow you if you continue to give the right message uh, and not be cheesy, not be salesy, um, be varied, maybe not just think I'm just going to keep posting my availability today because I don't know what else to post. Go and learn. Even if, even if it's read a book like Donald Miller, uh, Donald Miller is a book I read. He's like a script writer from Hollywood and he did a marketing book. Can't remember what it was. And he just talked about storytelling. You know, it's another example. And this is where I think, people get confused, right? Because marketing is so many ways to do it. People just get a bit lost and they just get a bit like, oh, I'll just post something. Um, I was thinking maybe, I'm not sure if we've got, it might be nice in one of our folders, um, in the STA folders, to put a little resource. I mean, you could, maybe if we haven't got it yet, you could start it off, but just a uh, recommended readings for marketing. It could just be called yeah. the marketing folder. Gary's probably doing it as we speak. But yeah, just recommended reading for that subject area. Because ultimately, I think it sounds like from your answers, having that conversation with a professional, it's like always the answers are inside you. You just need someone to pop the right questions and it will come out and your marketing is going to reflect you. It's going to be more personal, et cetera, et cetera. But for people who aren't quite ready or haven't got a chance to make that investment yet, it'd be nice to have a little list of things to read in the meantime, free resources. So uh, we'll sort that out. When we, Gary, we'll sort that out. Let's have a look at some questions from people in here. Don't forget, people, don't let us just whittle away. If you've got any comments, particularly on marketing, which worked for you, didn't work for you, anything which in reaction to what um, Tom said, 
um then do put some comments in there we've still got 10 minutes uh, for any comments or questions i've got a few things on here um i was talking to you about chris Gibson, wasn't i, I don't think chris and tom have actually met in person chris have you met tom you must have crossed the therapy expo maybe chris watches you and you don't I know have, maybe. i think he must have done i just said you both got boyish charm and i said he needs to watch you on the drums chris because that's just something else you turn from a boy into a legendary monster on the drums it's crazy um and that's also a way i don't know if you do it intentionally or someone's called chet's told you to but i think it's important i like it sometimes when somebody puts in something personal which has nothing to do with what they're selling or their job it's just bam here's me with my kids bam here's me playing the drums i mean that's probably an important part of marketing as well isn't it showing you're human um, I'm not saying yeah, you only sure. do that because of that, Chris, but it works anyway. Um, Sarah Jones, I think, was impressed with, uh, she'd like some more resources on the breathing work. She says she currently works with a few bits from good old Lee and Chato. Um, yeah, so resources on breathing. We'll make sure that we add some stuff to the comments and maybe a folder as well. There we go. We've got another folder to set up breathing. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting as well. Um, Gary says he likes the term facilitator. Yeah, it's a great word, isn't it? I think I first saw that with Jason Silvernail and Diane Jacobs when they did that paper with facilitators, not operators. It's a big kind of move, isn't it, away from fixing things and working with people. It's a nice word, facilitator. It just always sounds a little bit kind of helping partners get back together again with me, facilitators. But it does probably describe best of what we do, working with the client. Um, Gary then goes on to say, most of the marketing I see simply shows names, services, contact associations. I don't think that engages. Yeah, well, that definitely links with what um, uh, Tom is saying. Gary's on fire tonight with a client who may not be able to swing a golf club or click, kick, a, kick a ball. Um, yes, definitely right. And also, we've got an announcement here. Look out over the coming days as ST announced a mentorship service. Talking of mentorship services. I mean, you seem to know a lot now. Is this something which you're passing on to other people? You're going to take all Chet's ideas and then start doing it yourself? Pretty much in a much uh, cost-effective way. Um, <laughs> it's, no, it's, um, I'm assuming uh, the post at the end there is related to the chats I've had with Gary recently. Mm. Um, I've, I've had an idea of trying to help people in a business sense for a while. My first talk at the expo was three things that people should do to help, you know, to really think about their business. Um, and I've been figuring out the best I've been trying to figure out for a while, how to help STA members best. Um, and I think we're at the point now where we've, I've got some good, strong understandings of basics of business, maybe, um, having done this for six years and now gone for a change, which needed a lot of thought and planning. And um, there's the mentorship for me is um, kind of a bit of a hybrid of um, remod uh, rebuilding. Hey, rebuild coach, uh, rebuilding your business in a sense of who are you? What do you believe in? What do you want to do? Let's start there. Let's figure that out together. Um, and now let's look at communications, not even marketing, right? Let's just look at communications because actually one of the things I think as a foundation, uh, it kind of comes back to the sales, not, not necessarily direct sales, but it comes back to the ability for you to communicate with clients, either existing or new, um, whether you can actually get them to believe you and sign and sign up with you. Because, you know, before we changed Valentis, I was doing work on privately on the side with people who were in pain. And I didn't, I didn't you know, operate one-offs. I always did books or packages. And the success that I've seen through that has proven that there are people out there that will do it. There are people that will consider their health in a longer term. If you have the right way of approaching, communicating with them, maybe. Um, so the mentorship that I'm putting together is going to be around the notion of maybe rebuilding your business based on you, the person and your values, how that, what that looks like potentially, and then how to communicate better so that that might even lay foundations in sense of with a client, with an existing client or starting the ball rolling for marketing as well. Um, so that's in the, in the works. Um, and we'll come back to you sooner with that. Obviously just having a chat with Gary soon just to finalize it really, and then advertise it to STA members. Sounds all very exciting. There's definitely, I think that's the missing link from turning 
because without having that kind of conversation and changing your business in those ways you just end up with loads of clients working your ass off getting really tired and you're thinking i'm not making enough money for what i'm doing here it's just too much i'm doing all this social media myself so i think what you're talking about and the services you could offer is probably for a lot of people how to get out of that working at maximum capacity and getting what seems to be the most you can get to suddenly changing the chip a little bit and making sure. more money probably for less effort which is what i guess a lot of people want to do that sounds very exciting um what have you got in store we're coming now to 857 so we're nearly up what you got store for the rest of the year tom we are growing the model uh, growing the business through the new model we're seeing how that goes over the next few months we are um trying to plan internships um one of the ways of getting new staff in we are looking to build our own internship processes um we the rebuild coach brand for me which is me personally in my jolly outings maybe um is going to focus on this kind of mentorship work i know that it's going to develop for me into um taking the skill set i have now as a health professional and helping others learn what i've learned um again i've just taken things from various different methods over the years put it together this is how I work now and here's the successes we've seen. So I want to train people in that. Um, I know that there's a, a growing ambition for sports therapists to learn more about strength training, and corrective exercise as a service, mm. um, helping people prepare for if there are other situations like lockdown, um, how can you effectively work online and remotely? Um, I've done it for, I've done it in America. I've worked with, people from Germany from I'm working with a new with a old client yes but she's just moved to Gaza um and I'm going to work with her so there's all these skill sets that I think I just want to share with people so that will be the development of the rebuild coach so Valentis is growing um we're getting new people coming through the door as we speak which is great uh rebuild coach is going to grow we're going to kick off the mentorship hopefully next few weeks um get the first round done with whoever's keen and then just take it step by step um and then helping the helping the STA out with a little bit more marketing stuff myself as well. Fantastic. And if people want to follow you, um, then on um, Facebook, you how do Facebook. you find your Facebook? It's um, I guess you type in slash rebuild yourself today. Fantastic. That's me. Um, if you want to follow Valentis, because you can get a bit more variation of social media content, maybe it's we are Valentis. Okay. Instagram, it's we are Valentis as well, but mm -hmm. me on Instagram is actually just Rebuild Coach. Okay, so Rebuild Coach or We Are Valentis, brilliant. And you are putting out some amazing materials. I'm hoping people there, if you're watching the recording or if you're watching it live, then check out those. I promise you it's some really good stuff which will help with your own marketing, potentially it'll give you some ideas um, and find maybe find your own chat. Um, everybody needs a bit of chat in their life. Right, well, Tom, thank you so much for giving up. That was amazing. Um, I love the idea of you sharing the success of your marketing which i've seen with other people that's really kind of you to come up and do that um and uh, yeah i look forward to where you are offering services for sta and then people will be able to have a one-to-ones and stuff like that with you and, and yeah benefit from your expertise it's very kind of you all right dude thank you very much i'm going to chuck you down to the lobby for a sec and just uh, finish up and say a few things but then i'll come down and say thank you myself again cheers matt thanks everyone. all right lots to think about very good um i don't know about yeah if you guys in there or people listening to the recording you definitely need to think about what you're putting out there on social media um i love the idea of yeah thinking it's a bit like planning your training sessions isn't it for your sport your runs or whatever and um, just planning putting them all together so the end product is a yeah product of what you've done consecutively uh definitely some great information out there and also yeah gone are the days when you're just kind of your marketing is oh i've got a gap at friday at three o'clock um and i wonder how early in your career you actually need to ditch that and focus more on as we say marketing your significance rather than your services maybe there's a new business card there for gary to come up with maybe that's going to change gary's business card who knows right um so yeah thanks tom for that very thought-provoking i'm looking forward to watching that preview uh, the uh, the recording back which will be on youtube in a couple of days time or something and um, before I sign out, uh, just to let you know 
in uh, this Thursday on Run Chat Live. Last Thursday was Ben O'Nig, Dr. Ben O'Nig. Any of you into running research? That was awesome. What a great mind. Incredible. He's about 83 or something now. Uh, but 40 years of knowledge and research and the stuff he was saying back in the 90s is definitely worth a watch. It's on YouTube. Um, this um, Thursday, I've actually got somebody who worked with Dr. Ben O'Nig for four years in Calgary in the Humans Performing Laboratory. Um, and in his own right, he's a fantastic researcher, uh, particularly on the topic of uh, fatigue um, and the different causes of fatigue, neurophysiological and the biomechanics and, and all of that, um, particularly with um, reference to um, extreme endurance sports, uh, for example, um, ultra trail running. Um, and he himself, those of you who are work with runners or runners yourselves. I mean, he's, he's no um, uh, recreational runner at all. He's placed in the top six um, of the um, Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. Um, yeah, three times he's been in the top six, and that's like one of the hardest races um, in the world. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of experience there. He's been talking about his research, and uh, yeah, a big one for you guys to join me on Thursday. If you're free at eight o'clock, um, let's take that solo off there. Also, um, you might have seen in terms of Run Chat Live, yeah, two years now, 50 episodes. Um, so um, I am putting out there a chance. It's a little bit of a lottery for you guys to win. If you're interested in going to the conference, the tickets are still selling because um, it's all online now. There's a chance to win um, a couple of 50% discounts. Um, and all you need to do really is find one of my adverts on Facebook or um, Instagram or LinkedIn um, or Twitter and just share it and, co and copy in a couple of friends and me one chat live um, and then not this Thursday Thursday afterwards one with Alice Sanvito who's a fantastic massage therapist evidence-based massage therapist she's going to be with us in two weeks time she's one of the speakers at the conference so two I've got some great speakers coming up not gonna lie um, so stay in tune on Thursday nights put Tuesdays in your diet but Thursdays are going to be absolutely awesome for the next few weeks as well in the lead up to the conference so have a look for that um and as always just to let you know because people are still sometimes emailing me and saying is there a discount code or something for sports therapy members and it is it's just sta20 keep it yourselves don't spread it with non-members oh jesus non-members watch this as well don't they okay well i'm just giving it away now um sta20 will get you 20 percent discount if you stick that in um uh yeah for the discount. right there we are that's it another let's talk about it session done um Next week, I'm not sure, um, but there's lots of exciting speakers in the um, being lined up. It's just a matter of pinning them down. Uh, still very keen for members to come up, especially regional reps. I'm still having this idea of two or three of you get together because it doesn't have to be one on one in these interviews. It can be a nice four of us having a chat about stuff. So but I'm going to leave it up to you. You have to get yourselves together. When someone turns around and goes, oh, we've got two or three people here now. We want to come on Then let me myself, myself or Gary now and we'll sort it out. But until then, we'll see you next week. Um, I'll put the adverts out who it's going to be um, on Tuesday at 8 o'clock in Let's Talk About. Thanks again to my guest, Tom. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week, guys. Take care. And thanks for joining us live. And thanks for listening to the recording. And thank you in advance for subscribing to our YouTube channel. I hope Tom's impressed with that. That was a call to action, which I'll finish with. Right. See you soon.